Today's video may get a bit fishy. Man, that's a terrible intro. Today's competitive overview is that of Basque Legion, which is a water and ghost type. Now, the typing actually has pretty decent offense. You do have a very nice super effective on several popular typings like Fire and Ground and even Ghost. And there's not a mono type that resists the dual stab, giving you a very low amount of Pokemon that actually resist this dual stab. Defensively, it's also still pretty good. Water Ghost is only weak to four typings. It just so happens that Grass and Electric offense is somehow not very common in Scarlet and Violet's meta. So for the most part, you just have to worry about Ghost and Dark type super effective offense. But this also has a pretty good resist spread and the dual immunity from Ghost. Ghost. And I don't actually think defensive Terra is super important for this typing. You could just run water because grass and electric type offense is, as I said before, not particularly common for whatever reason. And the most offensive threat for either of these typings is Iron Hands, and those are usually run very bulky. So this Pokemon has several abilities, all of which are pretty decent. The first option is Swift Swim, so you get a speed bonus in Rain, which is which synergizes very well with the Rain Setter like Pelipper. There is Adaptability, which increases your stab type damage. That is a great ability for this Pokemon. And the hidden ability is Mold Breaker. There are two variants, but they share four stats. Both of them have the same 120 base hit points, as well as 75 and 65 on the special defense and defense respectively, and a speed stat of 78 which is just slightly above the speed of Heatran, but is slower than even Regidrago. Personally, I find this speed stat around the 70s to 80s to be about the worst speed stat you can get, just because it's too fast for Trick Room, but it is also too slow for Hyper Offense. So a lot of Pokemon in this speed stat typically have to run Choice Scarf combined with like a Tailwind user to have good speed. And that takes away a lot of potential utility that you could get from more offensive items or even more defensive items. Now the male form is a physical attacker with 112 physical attack and 80 on the special attack stat. Whereas the female is primarily special attack with 100 on that stat and 92 on the physical attack. The base stats are slightly worse on the female, it's not quite as optimized, which technically makes the male better. And as we'll get into later, it looks like Basculegium was built for a physical moveset. Couple calcs for you, we got Cresselia, that is pretty much maxed out on physical bulk against the male Basculegium, which I'm running Adamant 252, just to showcase the highest amount of offense that you can expect to get out of this. And offensively, Basque Legion does outpace Cresselia by a fair bit, with Wave Crash doing upwards near 45% compared to Psychic's 32% max. And with Last Respects not having any boost, so it's just doing 50 damage, it is a 94.8% chance of a 3 KO, which is really not that bad considering this is a max physical defense Cresselia. But since this is Last Respects, it can end up doing more damage if a team is knocked out. So we're gonna put it at 100 power, that is if you lose one Pokemon on your team, and Last Respects is a guarantee to a KO, which is a big threat to Cresselia. If you lose two Pokemon on your side, it is a 68% chance of one-hit KO in Cresselia. And if you manage to get it to max power that you would be able to get in a VGC match, you're blowing past Cresselia with this move. And that is without Life Orb, without Terra-type boosting as well. We could add Ghost Terra-type boost to that, and that would be even higher. And I'm not sure if this is an error for Picolytics, or if adaptability actually works like this. With the Ghost Terra active, Wave Crash and Aqua Jet actually went down in damage compared to it being off. I have not confirmed if adaptability actually works that way, where it just picks your typing that is, I guess, active, but Picolytics seems to think it works this way. One more calc for you, the female set Modest 252 against the generic Picolytics Fluttermane. And if you are running this Modest, Basque Legion Shadow Ball does more damage to Fluttermane than Fluttermane does with its Shadow Ball. So you have a guaranteed one-hit KO, which is it's barely a guaranteed. 
compared to a 50% chance to win a KO, which is still a pretty good amount. And considering that Fluttermane is considerably faster, the odds are still in Fluttermane's favor. Especially if Fluttermane had a little bit extra spadef, it would actually have a chance to survive the Shadow Ball. Though obviously, if you were running a Life Orb on Basque Legion, this would be a guaranteed knockout and would require a fair bit of bulk investment for the Fluttermane to survive it. Which, if we made this Basque Legion timid with a Choice Scarf, it does actually outspeed a timid Fluttermane. The only issue with that is you do not have a guaranteed one hit KO. It is a 56% chance, which is a favorable damage roll, but there is always that possibility that it just doesn't work and then it's up to the Fluttermane's damage roll if they knock you out or not. In the damage calcs, I pretty much showed off all the good moves that these things get, but there are a few other options that might be pretty decent, such as Liquidation or Surf, as well as Blizzard Phantom Force, and some non-stab options like Crunch, Psychic Fangs, and I did show Head Smash just because why does this Pokemon get this move? <laughs> but this Pokemon gets a few supportive options. There is Soak and Scary Face, Rain Dance, Snowscape, and a less useful option in the form of Confusory. This Pokemon doesn't have the largest of movesets. You're kind of just stuck with its stab unless you want Head Smash for whatever reason. But with Regulation D already up on Showdown, I was kind of surprised that Basque Legion is seeing a reasonable amount of usage on there. And I really expected this Pokemon to just go under the radar because of its awkward speed stat. But the male variant is commonly used with adaptability and runs last respects with wave crash. And the point of it is a Pokemon in the back that is kind of your finisher. It cleans up the game for you and has incredibly high amounts of physical offense. Because if two of your Pokemon get knocked out and it finally does come out, the last respects is at 150 power with the adaptability boost and a potential boost from an item, which as we showed does a lot of damage into a Cresselia that is max physical defense. And that's a pretty bulky Pokemon. So you could definitely use this to clean up as a late game finisher. My only issue with Basque Legion is the speed stat. It's just a really bad speed tier that requires you to have either a ton of speed control on your team to make it work, or you run it Choice Scarf to kind of bring it up to the speed tier that it needs to be, or have enough bulk that the speed doesn't matter. And Basque Legion does not have the bulk to negate the middling speed. It is fairly bulky, but a Life Orb Fluttermane will have no problem knocking one of these out. So Basque Legion is definitely a Pokemon that has to be purpose built for the team and will need good synergy with the team. It's definitely not a Pokemon you just throw in any team and expect it to work. But it has a lot of potential because it has a lot of offense. It's just working around the bad speed stat to get that offense out. I do think it is more consistent than something like Reggie Draco, which relies on not getting hit for its signature move to have any point. This Pokemon can get hit and should it survive, put on a ton of offense with its stab. And I think there could be a point for the female variant as well, but I think the male variant is stronger because the moveset that favors physical offense. I think if this Pokemon were a little bit faster or a little bit bulkier, I would put it in the B tier range. But as it stands, I think it's just barely out of B tier and more like a C tier Pokemon. But you cannot ignore its high amount of offense. That definitely gives it a point and is something that you would have to respect if you saw one on the opponent's team. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you have any suggestions for a Pokemon that you want to see covered for competitive overview or speculation, let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, you can promote it with the algorithm buttons. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time.